Hey guys, Chris here. I uh, wanted to go over a couple things. Uh, I've been getting a request to do a favorite software list, so got that uh, compiled and wanted to go over that. Uh, tried to keep it around 20 or so, so I'll just go ahead and get right into it. I'm not going to go ahead and give in-depth like reviews or anything of that nature, but I'll definitely give links and you guys can go ahead and take a look and check it out for yourself. So to start with, um, as I've gone over in a couple of previous videos, is uh, deckboard software. Basically, that is a stream deck software that you can use in order to go ahead and control OBS or applications or things of that nature. I've been testing a couple different ones and I'm using two different ones. The first one being Touch Portal, which I will leave the links for the websites to get the software in the description. Uh, that one I am using to basically control OBS uh, inputs, um, things of that nature, sound, volume, recording, basically everything to do with OBS. I have another one which I've already done a review and a uh, overview of and that is uh, Duckbeard software. You can check my previous video out regarding that to get more information about that and I'm using that to basically control all of my favorite applications, uh, songs, things of that nature. Definitely go ahead and check out that video. It's pretty cool software. Uh, the next one on the list would be Brave uh, Web Browser, which is basically an alternative to Chrome, a very similar addition to Chrome. I've been testing it for quite a while and actually like it a lot. It is a much stabler browser in my opinion. Um, Chrome I love it a lot, used it for a long time, but I'm starting to notice that Chrome's getting a lot more bloated, a lot more RAM being used than what needs to be used, uh, a lot of RAM links, things of that nature, so I've kind of been looking for alternatives. This one seems to be fitting the bill so far for me. One of the things that I do like about Brave is the fact that it has ad blocking back baked right into it so you don't have to go ahead and get into script or anything of that nature. I've found that to be pretty effective along with the pie hole, which I have another video of already in my video list. And then also it has elements of Tor for privacy and browsing and things of that nature. I definitely think it's worthwhile checking out. Uh, the next one in my list would be Veracrypt. Uh, that is basically a, for better lack of terminology, a vault that you can go ahead and create for a certain size. I have a couple of them. I use some for my documentation for financing, um, taxes, things of that nature, things that I want to keep a little bit more secure. In order to get into that, it is encrypted and definitely something I think is worthwhile to check out for privacy reasons and things that you need to keep a little bit more locked down. You can def I have mine sitting on the vault itself, actually sits on my server, and I connect to it remotely, and my files are backed up to that location as well. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, the next one on my list would be Pi-hole, and that is basically ad blocking at the DNS level. Uh, if you want more information about that, I do already have another video listed regarding that software. And then, of course, uh, Grafana, which is an amazing piece of software, extremely powerful piece of software. Can be linked from everything from Prometheus, uh, Telegraph, InfluxDB, and everything in between. I have that being used to monitor my main Unraid server. I have a video of that already listed as well. Uh, the next one on my list would be. Uh, regarding wikis and basically wiki is a repository that you can use for um, recipes, booklets, favorites, information. Uh, I'm currently using Bookstack. I will be doing a video about this at some point in time. I do keep an eye out for that. I will be going over that more in depth and I will also be going over Bookstack as well. Uh, the next one on my list would be a photo management software. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. I'm probably going to be butchering that, but it's called uh, P-I-W-I-G-O. 
and that is a really extremely powerful piece of software that I am using to basically host and manage all of my photos. That way I can definitely go ahead and look at what I have, uh, whether it be personal photos, friends, family, whatever it may be. I will definitely be doing a video of that, so keep an eye out for that as well. And then, of course, OBS itself, which is what I'm using to record my videos. As you can tell, my software and my quality has gotten a lot better. I am actually using my phone instead of my webcam to record this video, so you should definitely see a lot better quality from here forward. Uh, the next one in my list, which I will also be doing a video of at some point in time, is Sonar and Radar. And what that is, is that is actually an extremely powerful piece of software that is used to automate downloading and from the web, whether it be videos, um, movies, TV, whatever it may be, you can definitely set up automatic downloading for when your favorite shows come out and download them and have them go to whatever location that you choose. And then, of course, uh, there is Usenet downloading software, which there's several of them out there. I'm not saying that one's better than the other. My personal use, I am using uh, SAB NZBD. And then, of course, and regarding downloading, the next piece of software, which I believe it's only like $10 or something of that nature, is a FileBot, and that is an amazing piece of software that I pretty much could not live without at this point. And basically what that is used for is in order to, a lot of times when you download movies or media of that nature from the internet, it will come through as a really weird file name and you will have to manually go through and change it or find a way to change it to match so that way Plex is able to go ahead and basically figure out what it it is that you're feeding it because it won't have any idea a lot of the time so this will actually go and it uses IMDB or other movie and media services to basically find out what it is that you downloaded and it will import the name correctly that way when you feed it into Plex that it will be able to tell what it is. Uh, the next thing that I pretty much couldn't live without is uh, Colored Crusader and that is a pretty popular file browser that is used with Unraid, which is built on Linux, and that is also a file browser that Linux distros also use. I use that in order to log into the Unraid server itself, and then I bring up that browser, which I, then I'm able to go through and manipulate files and folders, and do uh, copies, renames, deletes, uh, things of that nature. And then, of course, uh, the next piece of software, which is uh, Twitchilla. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. I do apologize if I am. But that is Plex monitoring software that you can use in order to find out how many people are on, how many streams that you have going, um, IP addresses, bandwidth usage, basically everything in between. It has a really amazing, actually I'm pretty impressed, graphing. That way you can find out usage, how many plays have done for the month, things of that nature really awesome piece of software, which then that brings me to Blex. I have been collecting, downloading, using media. I have used everything from XBMC days to basically everything in between. And pretty much at this point in time, Plex is all I use to basically manage all of my media and movies and TV shows and everything in between because I do have an extremely large amount of media. And then of course, moving on to the next software is uh, Mozilla Thunderbird and that is basically a piece of software that I am using to basically download and grab all of my uh, email from my various email providers because I do have a couple of different ones. I have three, uh, one for YouTube itself, and then of course my personal, and then of course my Hotmail address, all in one location, so I don't have to open up a bunch of different places to find my email. Super duper handy. And then of course another piece of software which basically doesn't get enough credit if you do ask me is Snipping Tool, which has been around since I believe the Windows 7 days if I'm not mistaken. I don't believe it was before that. And that is basically a software built directly into uh, Windows itself. That way you can get screen grabs for receipts, um, important piece of information, basically anything you need. 
really awesome, simple, easy to use software, don't have to install anything, built right into Windows, super duper helpful, I use it all the time. Which of course that brings me to kind of the next piece of software that's kind of similar, which is screen to GIF. You, it's a, basically a nice handy little tool that you can use to record, uh, let's say, a movie or something from the internet, stream anything that you're watching, and it will basically take snippets of that action that's on your screen, and you can it will take uh, a lot of screenshots. Uh, anywhere from like 1 to like 50 screenshots and then you can take those screenshots and combine them and basically make cool little gifts out of them which I use for a couple of the places that I do some modding for and things of that nature so definitely super helpful and then of course the last one which I think is a godsend and has been needed for a long time is called Process Hacker 2 it's basically for better lack of terminology and explanation, task manager on steroids. So, computer locked up, you go to control and delete, you go to task manager to see, hey, you know, what's going on with my computer, what's taking up all my resources, and it will say a uh, process ID, and you know, it's got 20 of them, so you don't know, okay, so what is really being used? This will actually break down uh, more thoroughly and do a better job that way you can narrow down whatever process rogue application task whatever it is it's actually locking up your computer and it gives you a much further and in-depth uh, tracking uh, resources monitoring things of that nature definitely something super helpful and one of the nice things about it is you can go back and forth and control delete between the old one and this new modified one which is extremely powerful I will definitely, like I said, I will put links in the description of all of the software that I am using from this video. If you guys think of anything else that is really super helpful, definitely go ahead and leave a comment below. Definitely make sure to like and subscribe and follow my social medias. Have a good one, guys.